Oh. At least put it <laughs> on. <laughs> Was that? At least so, put so, it on. So, well, so what you have to do, you have to, um, so the, the, the first thing is to get them blown up. So, so you have to blow up the bladder. So you have to blow up the this is, so the vat. And is it a sheet bladder? So, well, it used to be. This, this, this is now Gore-Tex. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's actually still made out of hide on the back, but um, we, we used to we used to season them with, with honey and um, and whiskey. Oh yeah. And um and, and actually and the the drone reed used to be made out of bamboo, but now they're now these are plastic. Now they have to of course. Well, I'm keep and well, it's just easier. It's I'll, just easier. Look. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kate hates it. <laughs> Kate's English. <laughs> The um, <laughs> she's just not talking much. Um, but the, the 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 this is plays the melody. This yeah, that's how you're moving your fingers up and down. Yeah, and well they that. they're so so because it's a continuous noise. You can't you can't do staccato. What's this? So you can't stop the noise. So uh, you have this thing called grace notes, which are the little notes in between. And so um so so that's where the difference becomes in, in Highland Pipes. I have a, I have a pair of small pipes. I'll, I can show you those later. But see, um, your is ready. Okay. Well, I'll let Ryan have a quick go of this, <laughs> and, then, and then we can have supper. Ryan's right. got to learn to play so, the pipes, okay? Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't Kate's like, we don't either. need another I one. Mean, these, these actually are quite a, a hard set because they're, 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 they've got a very um, wide bore because they were played in the Second World War by the pipe major of the Scots Guards. Who oh, wow. And, who was, and, so, um, and these are ivory and... I've actually taken, I took this to Cambodia and played for my friend's wedding there. So we went in and out of, we went in and out of China um, with ivory. So we smuggled it in and out. We didn't mean to, I forgot. Oh, so that was technically illegal. Technically wow. illegal. We could have ended, I, I didn't Ooh. realize until afterwards. Anyway, but I'm That's gonna, not really so, a place you want to end up in jail. What do you, so no. the first thing is you've got to blow in the blow stick. So, 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 the first, hold, hold, so, so, so wait, hold the pipes. Is you start off. That left hand, left on, hand on, on the on the on the bass drum, on the, which is this one. That's the bass. And um, and then you got that over your shoulder. Swap over. Okay. Right hand on the on on the stock. Okay. And then, and then you need the... to hold hold that. So then you got to balance there. So that's oh. the balance with just one hand. <laughs> balance. Okay. Like that. Okay. And then and then it's and then. Quite a bit of it, kind of a puff to get them going to get it. Um, you just want a little bit of a caress, you know, they need a little fondle. <laughs> um, a little bit of fondle, okay. And that's the strike note. I guess it's squeeze. Yeah, for now, onto your, onto your shoulder. So that's going on down the shoulder. Keep going back a bit there. there. And the then you switch. Switch hands, yeah. And you get here and then give you your, your notes, yeah. So you can notes. hold. Yeah, just hold, hold the charger. Yeah, like that. There. Yeah. <laughs> this is totally anti-COVID. I mean, I've just done a test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Gonna balance it. Wide, I, I wide your to shoulder. Te technicalities of the, uh, where, you don't no, have uh, straight uh, fingers because uh, it's quicker to play. Um, all right. But, straight fingers. But anyway, so now blow. It needs a lot of blow. Okay. Take this hand off okay. oh, and keep blowing and just puff up the bag. Give it a fondle. Just put it in the <laughs> okay, and now really push. I need to get a note out of this. And it's, it's a lot of note. A big note. Keep going. Keep going. Yep, yep, yep. You've got to get a note out of that. So you're going to even more. More, more puff. <laughs> yeah, almost. Keep going. You're almost more puff. More puff. <laughs> Keep playing <paying> more puff. <laughs> That's so much puff. <laughs> it needs a lot of puff. That's a lot of puff. <laughs> You're supposed to breathe during that time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you need to, this this arm. Yeah. So that's why yeah, that's I, I think I've, I've definitely have bigger pecs on this side. Than that. I, I bet. Sure I bet. bet. <laughs> so that's, it takes a bit of stamina to. It, it does. Because you got to keep your breath right. And, to keep it blown up keep enough. Keep it blown up and then squeeze and then play. That's a, that's a lot of stuff. So have another, have another go. Have another go. Okay. You can do it. You can right. do it. We're I believe in you. <laughs> I'll try not to. Yeah, don't pass out. <laughs> so you need to get this right up here. So. Okay, there we go. Blow. Keep going. And more. 
I need to really press on this one. It's like a, it's more like breathing, you know. So, of course, I've never played anything ever in a band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've been me. So, <laughs> and so I've never done anything like that before. But I'm pretty <laughs> impressed of what, how long. I mean, like how long they can go because that takes a lot of work. <laughs> well, I mean, over the seats. Seat so does time. like each area or clan have their specific songs, or is it just yeah, yeah, like everybody plays the same thing? So the different regiments would have their own songs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. The clans would give an affiliation <laughs> oh, to a regiment. Actually, well, okay. So when the regiments then came into being, so the oldest regiment is um, is the Royal Scots. Okay. I think they were all numbered. So in in the sort of oh. in the sort of Victorian era, they all had a had a, had a number. Um, okay. They're going to have us extremely spoiled. Yes, they are. Already had haggis, homemade. Now we're having fish pie. We're trying. Idea. We're trying. Yeah, oh, we're just working see, on it. I'll just see what. <laughs> we're picking Steve's brain for all the best places to visit. <laughs> it won't take long. Is it? Much <laughs> <in there. laughs> Whatever. Uh, He's a brilliant engineer. He's uh, just being a bit coy. Uh, no, that's not true. <laughs> but very kind. I can be brilliant in, if you want me to be. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. That's uh, what you need. You need a proper and old fashioned map. I like, I, you know, there's that's, something about it. I just need an good. old fashioned map. That will do that on the table. Come on, let's go to the, yeah, yeah. the table. This is what my dad would do. My dad this loves a map. Yeah, We're picking map. Steve's brain. And well, I, I love, see, as you can see, I love these. Are, these are ordinary and survey maps. <laughs> yeah, I, I went and looked one day and I was like, oh, they're all maps. He's a map guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love okay, maps. Okay, map woman. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then the Battle of Culloden's up here. Where they were defeated, they were having all the gone all the way down to to to, yeah, to Derby. So they went, I mean, they went, they went far because like, they scared. Yeah, them oh, they, they yeah, they went all the way down. But it wasn't England Scotland. It no, was, it, it was, was Lowlands and Highlands. Yeah, and uh, Scot and, and so it's always painted as being um, so Scotland. It's like it's like independence now. It's always painted yeah. as being England Scotland, and it's nonsense. It's Scotland Scotland. It's Scotland Scotland. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, it's, it's never it's never as simple as it was a civil war. Civil you know, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. it's not you know it's like so it's it's not as simple as it's as always English. painted mm. it's painted as being bad English and, and nice Scots. And of course, so of that's course. just not true. Of... So this is this is so so we that bit's quite this is interesting, you know. Yeah. But this is when it starts getting a little bit more in some ways more dramatic. Yeah. Guys, so we are starting something super exciting today. We are so freaking excited. Woo! Um, so <laughs> we are heading out on our Scotland road trip today. We left Edinburgh early this morning. Well, not early, mid-morning. Mid-morning, yeah. It is a Sunday, so we picked up our rental car at the airport. But we are heading out to see all of the highlands, drive the NC 500, and just take an epic journey through this incredible, incredible country. So, let's go! This is ridiculous. <laughs> um, Kay and Steve have hooked us up with everything that we need to go, quote unquote, wild camping in Scotland. And um, I'm not sure if it's going to fit in our mini. It's going to be interesting. We look ridiculous. Yeah. Trolley. It's good. I don't know if that was them were rough. This is ridiculous. But Steve said that no matter if you're camping for a couple of days or or a long time, you still got to take pretty much all the same stuff. <laughs> and so we're loaded down with all the stuff for maybe one night or two. We're going on an adventure. We finally got everything going. We got upgraded to a nice Ford Focus. We were supposed to be in like a tiny Fiat 500. <laughs> so we've gotten a little upgrade. Very nice lady. 
and oh, yeah. uh yeah so our car rental for this week we tried very 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 hard to get a camper van rental <sighs> Um, but unfortunately at the last minute, everything was sold out. That was a decent price. And then there were some really weird restrictions for insurance, um, mm. on camper vans. Most of the camper vans use a specific company and that company requires you to turn in two utility bills with your current address on them. Um, which is really hard for people who don't have utilities. Um, so just beware if you're coming to Scotland that and you want to drive a camper van that you might have to turn into utility bills now it can be like a phone bill as long as it has your current home address on it so we finally found a bank statement and a credit card <laughs> statement and yeah. a uh, car insurance that we that were within 90 days that we thought would work um when we called the company they said they weren't sure if it would work and that they would have to turn it into the insurance and they would make a decision on monday probably by late morning so today is Sunday and we really needed to get going. They were already going to cut us one day short on the mm -hmm. camper rental because they didn't have it available for all the days that we wanted. So that was going to cut us three days short. We were going to lose Sunday and Monday and the last day. So we really didn't want to cut our 10 day trip down to seven just for the camper van. So, all right, we have successfully made it to the grocery store. Working on getting navigation fixed. Had a little lunch. Learning the curve. It's like the ultimate driving experience because not only you're on the left side of the road, but also we are have a manual vehicle, so he's learning to shift with his left hand and be all backwards. And uh, we've already gotten trapped in a parallel parking situation. Oh, and uh, <laughs> So stressful. And then, yeah. then I killed it. In the middle of the road, oh, yeah, in traffic. Trying to pull out into trying traffic. Trying to pull out. So, if we cut you off today or oh. died in front of you, we're sorry. Just to let you know, our intended route is to travel up the east coast for a short period of time up to St. Andrews. We'll cut across the lock and then we will cut inland, to go to the Cairngorms. We'll go up the eastern part of Scotland. We will drive the NC 500, and then we, which is like the northern peninsula, very famous road. And then we will come down the western coast of Scotland with our car, cut across some of the historical sites and castles, and back to Edinburgh. So that is the goal. Um, and then after that, we're going to go see some of the islands and stuff using trains and public transit. So we're doing a little bit of both, but we wanted to make sure we could get way up into the highlands while we had our own vehicle. So that's the plan. I think you guys should probably prepare to hear me say, how stinking cute is that? About a billion times over the next 10 days because we're only at stop number one and I've already said it three times so it's gonna happen a lot okay guys so there's not a ton to see here but if you pick up your rental car mid-morning in Edinburgh most of the offices open around 10 or so so if you're picking up your car there this is a great stop you like just got out of the city past a lot of the bigger towns at, or suburbs and it's a good spot to stop and have lunch like you're right by the sea it's really quiet here the scenery is beautiful so it's a good spot for a little picnic before you move on but you're not going to stay here too long <music> We are on the five coastal route. We are going through some of the cutest little towns. Pit and Ween, we just went through. It's like a little traditional fishing village. It's still a lot. There's a big fish market and stuff there. Um, it's not open today, but it's um, adorable. And apparently, there's like a battle between them and Anstruther just up the street about like 
whose town is the cutest and we have this total hot fuzz moment because like when you come into the sign it's like best kept small town award <laughs> it's like oh people kill each other here over their flowers <laughs> i'm just kidding scots are way too nice for that they're super nice people but uh yeah it was definitely a moment anywho if you haven't seen hot fuzz and you don't know what i'm talking about but if you have you totally do and we are totally in the hot fuzz town and it's adorable and that's all I have to say about that. Welcome to St. Andrews. St. Andrews, it's got a really cool, huge old cathedral, ruined cathedral. A, it looks like a ruined castle. And it's the home to golf. It's where they believe that golf was invented, or at least the rules of the modern game kind of came about here in St. Andrews. And it's got a famous course here that they always have the open net. There's an old course, a new course, and they actually just played at the old course, which was kind of a big deal. I can't imagine how like imposing and beautiful this cathedral must have been. Like coming in from the water, there's the old harbor, and like this massive, gorgeous cathedral behind. Like must have been pretty impressive. So this area, like from Pit and Weem all and up through this area, there's a whole bunch of old like seaside swimming pools. A lot of them are kind of unkept, but you can still use them. Um, the locals told us they used to be like kind of really kept up and now they're not and they've added like some new ones and stuff. But yeah, they're just like saltwater swim pools that are kind of built into the shoreline. Pretty cool. So interesting history fact here in St. Andrews. In the early 1500s, a guy named George Wishart was a preacher, like one of the first Protestant preachers. And he got betrayed to the Catholic Cardinal here who burned him at the stake. Back there behind Ryan, there's like a place on the ground where his initials are carved in the road where he was killed. But then his friends got real rowdy about it and they came back and captured the Cardinal and hung him from the battlements of this castle. And then they decided to have the first Protestant church service in Scotland, apparently, in the castle, with his dead body hanging out the window. So, there's that. This part of Scotland from Edinburgh up to St. Andrews is really stately, really, really beautiful, very posh. And um, some of the Scottish people <laughs> say that it's really more English than Scottish, um, but it's definitely beautiful. People are super, super, super friendly, which we hear that's the case all over Scotland, no matter where you go. But um, yeah, there's kind of a, there's kind of a joke that Edinburgh people are very uppity and Glasgow people are hooligans <laughs> and uh, we don't know if it's true yet we've not been to Glasgow so I guess we'll find out when we get there all right Glamis Castle I'm gonna read Whatever I get here, I don't even know what all this came from. Um, it's the red sandstone walls of Glamis have been home to many colorful characters throughout the centuries, not least of them the late Queen Mother. It also famously features in Shakespeare's Macbeth, crowned in bat. The statue of Shakespeare. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, let's see, crowned in battlements and pointed turrets, Glamis is the epitome of the baronial grandeur. Well, unfortunately there won't be any camping tonight. We just landed in this little town called Stonehaven to get some dinner. Um, most of the town's closed down, but we did find a little place to get some fish and chips. 
That was disappointing, yeah, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> this is supposed to be a really good place to get fresh fish because it's like a fishing village, but that one wasn't super great. No. But but there's not a lot open on Sunday, no. so oh well. It was edible. We ate it. Yeah. Um, but we ended up having to book a little room here in Stonehaven because there's a castle we want to see here tomorrow. We were going to do some wild camping tonight, um, but while we were eating dinner, it started pouring down rain, and they're expecting like thunderstorm all night tonight yeah. till like 1 a.m. or something. So we decided we did not want to set up a tent <laughs> in the rain, and we did no. not want to deal with the rain all night either and the temperatures dropped quite a bit so yeah. in the last hour so anyway looks like the first night of our road trip we staying in a hotel morning guys morning scotland road trip day two i might be kind of out of it today hey just forewarning if i'm dazed and look confused <laughs> they put my grandfather in the hospital last night, so um, I spent a lot of last night talking to family and trying to make decisions and talking to the doctors. And of course, this morning, you know, there's 10 questions on my mind that I should have asked that I didn't. And yeah, so anyway, um, yep. And so if I'm a little absent today, that's why. So we're going to go see Donater Castle, which is pretty close to where we are. Big, beautiful ruin of a castle. And then for a couple more days, Balmoral Castle, which is the Queen's um, kind of Scottish rural home, is open. So we have an appointment to go see that. So that is the plan for today. And then probably camping in the Cairngorms tonight. Maybe. Yeah. Yep. That's the plan. So the Scottish rebels held off Oliver Cromwell and his forces on top of this rock for like eight months. Stop number five, Balmoral Castle. So this is the Queen's kind of holiday home here in Scotland. And it is only open for a few more days. We got here luckily. Um, it will be closed as of August 2nd because actually I think she's already here. Well, he just said that he told me that she's coming. So they're getting, or maybe she, mm. she's either here or she's coming. Cause he said they're getting, he says really pretty up there and cause they're getting everything pristine and ready for her to be here. So I think she's not here yet. Not here yet, but coming. She was at Hollywood Palace a couple weeks ago and they told us she was already here, but she must have gone somewhere else yeah. in between. But anyway, it closes down in August 2nd, which is a couple of few days from now um for her seasonal time here at the palace so anyway we caught it at the last minute beautiful gardens beautiful place um there is a pay and display parking it's five pounds yep and uh and then you just walk up to the castle so pretty easy to find and the royal distillery is also close by if you want to check that out you can do that like in a combo um tickets to the castle were 15 pounds and you do need to book those online ahead of time. So just FYI, you can do it like the day before, but you, you do need to book them. You can also book a ticket here at the entrance. Um, there is a booking fee to book it online, which is weird. Usually it's cheaper. There is an actual little booking fee here, but um, we didn't know because yesterday it didn't really give us an option except to book online. So, but you can get one here. Dr. Seuss flowers. So that yellow and red lion flag at the top is called the Royal Scottish Standard or the Royal Scottish Banner. Um, and it's only used in places in Scotland that are homes of the Queen. And it typically flies when she is not at the residence. So she's not here today. So the estate here, <laughs> Queen Victoria and Albert were in another part of Scotland and it was a wet, 
gross week and they were just miserable there and uh, the the guy who owned Balmoral Estate had been leasing it from the Earls of Fife and he choked on a fishbone and died that week and so they decided they'd heard wonderful things about it about the property and so she purchased the lease and then they came here like three months later and they loved every single bit of these hills and beautiful countryside and so Albert decided to build a castle it's been in the royal estate ever since <music> Well, our check engine light's on. I talked to about six people, finally found someone in Aberdeen who was amazing, so that's where we're gonna take it. So, here we go. Drove here to Aberdeen, <coughs> sorry, and switched out our car. So now we have a new car. It's blue, it's a Vauxhall something, I'm not sure. She's blue. She's blue. The blue phoenix. We are here at the battlefield of Culloden, and this is the last great stand of the Jacobites happening in the fields behind me. So if you're familiar with Scottish history, this is basically a British civil war. So you have the British government on one side, and then you have the royalists on the other side, which are the supporters of the Stuart family. So that's like Mary, Queen of Scots family only much, much later, hundreds of years later. So this is their last great battle. It was an intensely bloody battle led by Bonnie Prince Charlie on one side, the British government on the other side. You can tour the battlefields here at Culloden for free, but for about 14 pounds, you can go into the museum and actually get a guided tour of the battlefields, which we highly, highly suggest. The guided tours are amazing here. The historians are incredibly knowledgeable and they love their job and you can tell. So they do not only a guy about a 45 minute tour of the battlefield, but they also do um, guided tours on the inside of the museum and talks. We watched one on um, tartan plaid today and on the dress of the Highlanders, they actually call it plaid, not plaid. Um, we and how to get dressed as a as a Highlander. We watched one on the weapons of Highland, the Highland army of the Jacobite, not the Highland army, the weapons of Highlanders. But a lot of Highlanders fought in the Jacobite army, not exclusively, but a lot of them did. So talked about the weaponry of the time. We watched one on the um, prisoners after the battle. This final rebellion, a lot of the prisoners were rounded up. Some of them were French, some of them were English, some of them were Scottish, and they were all put to trial. Some were shot on the spot. Some were sent into the Caribbean and the United States as indentured servants. So um, they do a whole talk on that and uh, Ryan was actually one of them. So he got sent to the Caribbean, y'all. Sorry. He's getting a tan now. But anywho, definitely recommend that you take the tour at Culloden. You can spend a couple of hours here and it really does help you wrap your mind around the history of this area and get a better sense of Highland life. Those being concerned in this rebellion to hand in their weapons and report themselves to the local magistrates to submit themselves to the king's mercy. This proclamation was issued in February 1746 to encourage men who have been involved in the Jacobin rebellion to turn their weapons and surrender. Now we have no idea how effective it was. What we do know is two months after the proclamation in April 1746, the Jacobite cause was never destroyed here at the Battle of Culloden. And in the next couple of months, around 3,500 Jacobites will eventually turn their weapons and be surrendered and will submit themselves to the king's mercy. And it is the fate of those Jacobites what we're going to be talking about today. The other 19. They all get to go home? No. No, they are automatically assumed to all be guilty, all be Jacobites, and they'll be joining our man here in the Caribbean on a fantastic cruise to Hollywood. <laughs> As for this man, no, we're going to put him on trial. Now, do you think this man is going to get a fair trial? No. no. Of course not. It's going to be kangaroo court. We want to find this man guilty. So we're going to ask him very loaded, very leading questions. So, sir, have you ever in your life worn tartan? No. Guilty! I mean, no. <laughs> Too late. Yeah. Heard your first answer, sir. <laughs> guilty. Why? Because tartan becomes associated with the Jacobite cause as a political symbol. So it does not matter if you've worn tartan because you're a Highlander, it means you must be a Jacobite. And supporting them so clearly, you are guilty, you're a Jacobite, you're going to the Caribbean. And sir, you've already played yourself. But we want to get you the maximum sentence, so we're going to ask you some few more questions to get you even more guilty. No. Sir, have you fit. ever done gardening? No. No. 
And if you had ever done gardening, or perhaps you own some flowers, do you own some flowers? Have some flowers in your home? Flowers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever admired some flowers before? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Were any of those flowers white roses, by chance? Nearly ah, had it. Nearly had it. Why? Because remember the white cockade? It's a white rose. So this man's ever done gardening or ever admired a white rose before. He's clearly got Jacobite sympathies in his head. He is a Jacobus. But thankfully, sir, you managed to pass that. But we're definitely going to get you this time, sir. Have you ever been to a place called Dramossi Mur? No. He's definitely guilty because he's just lied to the court. <laughs> Where do you think you are, sir? This is Dramossi Mur. Ah. <laughs> Rodden Mur is actually an extension of Dramossi Mur. <laughs> you, sir, have been walking around with me for the last hour, so I definitely know what you're doing here. <laughs> now, those are the type of very leading questions that were spoken by judges to try and get guilty sentences. But, sir, you have a chance to get off. You're going to do something called turn King's Evidence. Now, is there anybody in this crowd you happen to know for a fact is a Jacobite? No. Not even these fine people over here. <laughs> a very, very loyal Jacobite. He's a good man. <laughs> now, I respect your principles, but you're still guilty. You're still going to the Caribbean on your way. <laughs> I thought they were shot. Not all of them. Some of them will be hung and drawn in court. Good morning, guys. Um, bad news. My grandfather passed last night about, well, about 4 a.m. our time here in Scotland, so I got the call from my mom. Um, that he had coded in a couple of times and um, just weren't able to get him back the last time. So, um, we are going to abort our Scottish mission. Um, I was not able to get us a flight home until tomorrow, so we have the rest of today to just kind of leisurely make our way back to Edinburgh. Um, and then we will fly home from Edinburgh tomorrow, so be along day or two but um but yeah we gotta get home mm -hmm. 